Hello and welcome to my video on Cardiac Emergency Department ECHO. My name is Dr. Jamie Powell and I am a first year emergency medicine resident at UBC's interior site in Kelowna. The objectives of this video will be to review the anatomy of the heart, to review the indications for bedside cardiac ultrasound, the technique for the sub xiphoid view, to define a determinate scan, and to look at an example of a pericardial effusion. The anatomy of the heart is such that it lies almost in the center of the chest and much more anterior than you might think. The long axis runs from the patient's right shoulder to the left hip and more vertically in younger, thinner patients. The heart is enclosed in the pericardium whose visceral and parietal layers usually have less than 50 cc's of physiologic fluid in between. So how do we image this? Well, there's so many views and a formal echo will utilize multiple views, including the parasternal long axis, parasternal short axis, apical four-chamber, two-chamber, and even three-chamber views, the sub and the IVC. We will focus on the sub view. The indications for this test include cardiac arrest to look for signs of asystole, undifferentiated shock to look for evidence of obstructive or cardiogenic causes, and if there's a concern for pericardial effusion. This may be present in patients presenting with dyspnea, chest pain, post-MI, or trauma to the chest, back, neck, or upper abdomen. The test is binary, aimed at answering yes or no questions, such as is there a pericardial effusion and is the heart contracting normally? The image obtained may not be intuitive, but this 3D modeling might help. You must remember that the patient is facing you and is a mirror image, so the screen left represents the patient's right and vice versa. Also, because we're aiming the probe cephalad, the most inferior structures are closest to the probe and appear near field. So, looking through the acoustic window of the liver, the most near field structure will be the area of interest, the inferior pericardium. After that will be the right ventricle, then the interventricular septum, then the left ventricle. This image is labeled as the right ventricle, right atrium, left ventricle, and left atrium. The goal of the sub view is to provide a brief and limited evaluation of gross cardiac contractility and to check the pericardium for fluid. In this part of the video, I'll show you how to obtain optimal views to look for pericardial fluid. Stephanie is our healthy volunteer. The sub view is often the only access point we have during an active resuscitation. The scan is done with the low-frequency curved array probe or the cardiac or phased array probe. Use the cardiac pre-setting if available. Drape the patient appropriately in the supine position. If desired, have them flex their hips and knees to relax the abdomen. Use a generous amount of gel from the umbilicus to the xiphoid process. Use the transverse plane with the probe marker to the patient's right. You will want to start at maximal depth and you will notice that your hand will be completely over the probe to allow the probe to lay flat on the abdomen. I'm placing the probe just cephalad to the umbilicus, aiming almost straight up and sliding the probe cephalad until a window through the liver can be obtained. This prevents me from missing a massive pericardial effusion. I am pushing hard enough to allow the skin to envelop the probe, creating good contact. Once the heart is identified, usually as the thing that's moving on the screen, I make sure it's centered and adjust the depth. The area of interest is the inferior pericardium. If you're having trouble finding the heart, you will likely need to be more anterior, and this can be accomplished by flattening the probe on the abdomen. If this doesn't work, slide the probe to the patient's right to use more of the liver as an acoustic window. You will have to center the heart by healing the probe to the left. If the heart appears too bright, just turn down the gain. If it appears too dark, then First, make sure you have enough gel. Second, make sure you're applying enough pressure both posteriorly into the abdomen and superiorly towards the heart. Third, have the patient take a slow, deep breath to flatten the diaphragm and bring the heart towards the probe. Lastly, if needed, you can adjust the gain. Now that I have the heart on the screen, I focus on the pericardium. It appears as a thick, echogenic line surrounding the heart on three sides. There is no pericardium around the entrance of the great vessels, so don't bother searching for it. The inferior and posterior aspect of the heart would be the first to collect fluid as it is the most dependent area in a supine patient. Therefore, the inferior pericardium must be seen from its most rightward point 
seen here on the screen left, all the way to where it meets the septum forming a 7. A determinate scan shows an anterior to posterior sweep through the inferior pericardium. If fluid is visualized, it should appear as a black stripe. An epicardial fat pad is very common, appearing as an echogenic stripe, and it is always seen anteriorly. Unlike pericardial fluid, which appears posteriorly first and never just anteriorly, the fat pad will disappear as you sweep posteriorly, while the pericardial effusion does not. Thank you so much for taking time to watch my video. My contact information is listed below. Special thanks to Stephanie Schindler, Mark Sanderson, and the ultrasound instructors at the Kelowna General Hospital. A main source of information was from the Eddy course using the iBook Essentials of Point of Care Ultrasound. Keep an eye out for more instructional videos in the future.